Hey there, since llamas are getting a lot of attention lately, I thought we would make an artwork of a llama, but more specifically, this is a drawing of an alpaca. And alpacas are raised more for their hair, whereas the llama hair really isn't uh, of good quality and can't be turned into things like scarves. But alpacas are sort of the cousin of a llama. And in the country of Peru, alpacas are raised to help with climbing mountains for tourists and people that are going on, on hikes and, and climbing the mountainous areas of that country. And they're strong and able to carry a lot of uh, things with them. Also in Peru, they're often decorated, uh, the llamas, with, with a lot of little uh, fabric pieces and um, decorative little ropes. So we're gonna be inspired by those alpacas in the country of Peru and make ourselves one that is ready to climb. The very first thing we're going to do is create three really gentle ovals. The first one will represent this chunk of the body, the main part of the llama's body. Second one will be tall and skinny, which we will turn into the neck. And then we'll do a smaller one for the head. These are going to give us a little framework that we will uh, draw into, but again, the main body, tall for the neck, and then the head. So if I come to my clean sheet of paper, and you've got a pencil handy, near the center of my paper, really lightly and sort of sketchy, I'm going to draw a nice wide oval. You can do that several times to just get that shape in there. Above this, kind of skinny in the front, trying to represent the neck of this llama and then sort of at an angle leaning down a little bit I'm gonna have a smaller one up here that will give me the framework I need to build this alpaca's body to start I'm actually gonna come up and do a little detail work on the head what I'm gonna do is I need a nice round piece here at the top that drops down behind for the back of the head. I can actually get rid of some of these lines in here now. Again, the lighter you do those, the easier the erasing will be. I'm then going to take, we'll actually be erasing part of this next line, so I'm going to do this one lightly across the back of the alpaca. When I drop down around its rear end, I am going to do a little, little tiny tail before coming down for the leg which after a little while starts to curve out that way. To finish the leg, I'm going to come forward a little bit and have a curve heading towards that same area. And then this piece curves forward and meets up with this one. Simple end there at the bottom will give me the llama's leg. I'm going to mimic that same line in front to show that there is another leg over here and tuck that away behind there. I'm going to bring across the front here the belly of this alpaca. When I get near the front here, I'm going to bring down, looking at the where the, the back legs end, going to bring down two front legs, tuck that one behind, then I'll come up for the front of this llama to underneath the jaw, and this will give me a moment here where I can come back and erase some of this sketchiness that resulted from my initial ovals. Again, those, if you're ever drawing an animal or a body shape, Anything with multiple parts like this, sometimes just getting that little framework of those ovals in there can help you develop your drawing. From the top here of my alpaca, I'm gonna come down a little ways and curve nicely for the snout of this alpaca and curve up for the jaw. A little bit of detail work on the face here I'm actually going to erase this because I think I want the top of the head of mine to curve a little more like that, just a little more up. Always watching. 
and adjusting. I'm going to do a small curve with eyelashes for a closed eye. I'm going to toss two lines across here for the rope that's holding my llama and then just a nostril and a little representation of a mouth helps this come alive. At the top of my alpaca, I'm sorry, I keep interchanging llama and alpaca, I do want to show two ears, a little bit of, uh, remember that alpacas are raised for their fur, their hair, and so I do want to show a little bit of that. From these lines, which represent its harness, I'm going to drop out a swooping line up to the top of its head. This is our first little piece of uh, rope that would be guiding the alpaca. And I'm going to decorate that with some ball shapes all along. These are quite colorful. And next class, we're going to take that opportunity to make all of the decorations on our alpaca um, pretty colorful. I'm going to put across a few more of these colored colored uh, ropes with the ball shapes and I'll even put one here around the neck before I start to show that this alpaca has quite a bit of luggage on its back. That's going to start with two curving lines that shows this alpaca has a blanket covering its back where the luggage is sitting. And across this line, which will actually get erased, I can actually start by erasing it. That might help me here. First thing that I'm going to draw is going to look a little like a trunk. So I'm going to drop onto the alpaca's back here with a box shape to begin. Two straps on each side. And just represent a little buckle here. That's the first piece. On top of that, I want to show that this alpaca is carrying a rolled blanket. Spiral over there, come across. I have to match this curve back here to show a little 3D action. We're going to stop up here at the top with just a little poof, a little puff of like a pillow. If somebody wanted to take a rest, that's what's up here. And now I can come back and adjust these lines that I erased and bring them up to where they belong. Great work. Now that we have our alpaca drawn, along this fabric is going to be one of our most detailed aspects. I'm going to take out these little lines and connected to those lines are going to be these decorative shapes that almost look like a bell with tassels. So at the end of that bell shape connected to each one of those lines, I'm going to add even more tassels. Again, it's just sort of like a bell. When these alpacas are out and about, because they're an important animal in Peru, they decorate them. And we're trying to show that here as well. So take time to really enhance this particular detail. And the last thing we will add are the mountains that this alpaca is near. To represent that it is on an incline, the line that I'm going to use to show the ground is not going to be straight across. It's going to come down here at an angle. Underneath here and out the back. And lastly, we're gonna show Quite a country of Peru is very mountainous. So I'm going to take uh, one mountain here, another one that's coming from the back there, showing some overlapping, and some that are even farther away because they're shown smaller. 
one more over here, which we can see the peak of tucking behind, and we can show the tops of those with just a jagged line as well. Again, doing them light to see if you want to adjust any part of them. Last thing that we need to do today, I won't make you watch all of this. We do need to outline everything here with a Sharpie marker before we color next class, so take time to do that. But one thing I wanted to show you with the Sharpie marker, we did not represent the alpaca's fur when we were drawing earlier, but we can do that now with the Sharpie. I'll show you that in a moment. Again, I won't make you watch me outline the entire thing. And you surely by now know that like up here in this circle, I sort of missed some of my pencil lines. No problem. If I come back on top of there and erase, no one will have ever known that my pencil, that my Sharpie didn't end up right on top of my pencil. In a few spots, sort of back here at the rear end of the Llama, I'm going to show you back here. We can take an opportunity to show a little bit of the alpaca's fur, for example, in the front of the leg here, by not doing a perfectly straight line. We can help the viewer understand, hey, this alpaca's, because they were raised for their fur, we want to show that, their hair. I'm told that even though the llama and the alpaca are cousins, that the llama's fur isn't quite as good and isn't always saved, but the alpacas were raised for that purpose. So again, as you go through, just give a little bit of a textured line to show that the alpaca does have some fur. And if you do that in a race later, as I showed you earlier, no one will ever know that you adjusted what was there previously. So go ahead and continue at this point, going over all of your details with Sharpie marker. And next time I'll be back with you to color this artwork. Thanks so much.